Hi everyone, Paul here. Welcome to the channel where I make how-to videos. Time to share what I've learned and I'm back this time with a Salesforce tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to use Postman to integrate with Salesforce using a connected app. We'll set up a connected app in Salesforce. Then we'll try different OAuth 2.0 authorization flow in Postman. We're going to try authorization code and authorization code with PCKE, a username and password flow, a client credential flow and a web server flow and also troubleshoot some common errors let's go let's get started with a quick overview typically you have a web application or a client application that requires access to the salesforce apis or the resource server in order to access the apis from the resource server we need to be first authorized the resource server delegates all the authentication and authorization to the authorization server. So the authorization server would issue us tokens once we have successfully authenticated and authorized the client app access. Typically, you get a access token, which is the session ID, and a refresh token. So if the session ID expires, you could use the uh, refresh token to ask for another um, access token without doing the whole authentication again. Let's see how we could implement this. So I'm using Postman for this one. Uh, go ahead, sign up. It's free. I'll put a link on the description below or where you can download it. And you should also have access to either a sandbox org or a developer edition Salesforce org. So from the setup, just search for the app manager. We're going to first set up the connected app. So here, select new connected app, give the connected app a name. I'm going to name my demo. And other API here, um, tick the checkbox and you get a bunch more options. So for the callback URL, I'm going to specify localhost for slash callback. This should exactly match uh, your client application. But for me, I'm using Postman. This is what I'm going to specify. And for the OAuth scope, I'm going to have full access. Also, sometimes you want web and the refresh token and offline access. And then we have three options enabled here for us. So the proof key for code exchange. So this is um, enabled. Um, we're going to do the same in Postman. And every time you call the web server flow, it requires a secret, which is check. And every time you do a refresh token flow, it requires a secret. We're also going to enable the client credential flow, which we're going to uh, do in Postman. So those options should be fine. I'm going to hit on save, hit continue, and then we're going to grab the client ID, client secret. So to view the client ID, client secret under consumer key here, click on manage uh, consumer key, consumer details. And it's going to ask for a verification code just to make sure you have access to view those um, consumer keys. So paste in the authorization code. And here, just copy the consumer key. and copy the secret and I'm going to hit cancel. Cool. So basically we're done there. Now let's go to Postman and I'm going to hit on new here to create a new um, call out. I'm going to select HTTP and for this one it's totally blank. I'm going to select authorization. For the auth type select OAuth 2.0 and under here, I've been playing around with this one. So uh, give your token a name. So I name my uh, UTSF demo. I'm going to say one. So I know which one this is. Um, for the grant type, you can see there's a couple, uh, several options here. Once with no PKCE, once with PKCE. So depending on how you configured the connected app, select with PKCE. And later we'll look into um, the password credentials and client credentials flow. So for PKCE, it requires a callback URL. 
So make sure you paste the same callback URL that you specified on your connected app here. And for the auth URL, if you're on the developer edition, it starts with login.salesforce.com. If you're in the sandbox, it's going to start with test.salesforce.com. And this is the path for the um, auth URL. And for the access token URL, this would be your domain. And just with the services auth2 token and update the client ID, client secret with the uh, one we copied from the connected app. And SHA-256 for the chain, uh, code uh, challenge method and client authentication. Normally, send client credentials in body works. And then you can click on get new access token. And sometimes you would see this. It would say error invalid client ID uh, when you try to get the access token. So normally that happens when you have a fresh uh, connected app created. So what you may need to do is just click on edit and make sure that the callback URL is the same as the one you specified on your app. If it's the same, that's fine. Um, click on save. Normally that fixes that issue. So we go back here and click on get new access token. Okay, so now it's fixed. Uh, you'll get this login information. So go ahead, log in with your credentials. Once you've logged in, it's going to ask you to allow access for this connected app, which would have access to all of these. So click on allow and click on proceed. And here you would see we have a access token and a refresh token that we got from the uh, re uh, authentication server. Plus we have the instance URL. So I'm going to copy the instance URL. And I'm also going to say use this token. I'm going to paste the instance URL on here and select services forge clash data. When I click on send, this is going to hit that uh, resource server and it's going to give me this response from that API. Cool. So pretty much it's, it's working. Um, let's see what we could do here. So I'm going to select the query this api the query option so I select forge slash query and i'm gonna query the accounts so i'm gonna say forge slash um, question mark q equals to select id plus comma plus name from account when i hit on send you would see that from the response let me uh, close this console as well. You would see from the response, we got this back from the API. So it's working. Um, let me go back here and just quickly um, go under manage session. Uh, session management. And here I have this uh, session active from auth2. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this session. So this would invalidate that session. And if I go back to Postman and try to hit this server again, I'm gonna get a message uh, invalid uh, session ID. So the session is invalid. So what we could do here on the current token that we have we could refresh the token. So I'm going to open up the console here so that you could see um, what's going on here. So when I hit uh, refresh here, it's going to make a post request to the auth2 token server. And if I expand this and look at the request body, it's passing the refresh token and then uh, grant type is refresh token. And on the response, we're getting back a new access token. So this is 
the use of that other token, the refresh token, to get a new access token. Now, without authenticating uh, anymore, I could hit on send and then I'm able to hit the resource server again with the new access token that we got. Pretty cool, right? So that is using the uh, authorization code with PKCE, which is basically what we did is a web server flow. So other option that you could do for uh, authentication is using what we call password uh, credentials. But this has been, uh, these are security flaws because you're passing the username and password directly on the call. But I'm just going to quickly show this for educational purposes how it's done. So normally you pass the username and then you pass your password appended with the uh, security token. So when I hit on get new access token, and it, um, proceed here I'm gonna name this password so I know which one is which so you would see here it has an access token only and there is no um, re, uh, refresh token included on this uh, particular flow but you could use on that use token so now I'm using that current um, password client flow and I could click on send cool but behind the scenes, um, you could also do a auto refresh token, but that is managed by Postman itself. Normally uh, on integration, um, you have to build that yourself. So Postman allow us to do an uh, auto refresh from here. Uh, other flow is, if I go down here, is the uh, client credentials flow. So if I select that, you would see we're not passing the username password flow but when I go down here and click on get new access token I'm automatically greeted with a failed um, message and if I click on view it's saying invalid grant type description no client credentials user enabled so to fix this if you're doing a client credential flow you need to go back to the connected app so from the connected app click on manage And under here, you need to define a client credential user. So typically the API user that um, you granted it access with. So here I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna select the user and hit on save. And when I go back to Postman and try to get a new access token using that client credential flow, I'm greeted with the authentication complete, meaning it's successful. So this one I'm gonna say, just gonna rename this client credentials. And this one as well doesn't have a refresh token, just an access token, a use token. And I could use the same um, query that I have here. So the token I'm using is the client credentials token and I'm able to hit the API and get a response back. Cool. So there you go. A quick and easy way on how to authenticate and integrate Postman with Salesforce from the York Connected app. Hope you like this tip. Thumbs up, thumbs down. For any questions, leave them down in the questions below. Cheers. Bye for now.